Hey everybody, uh, in this video we're going to be talking about correlational research methods. So you should have your notes out for sure. There's going to be some questions in there that we'll be asking you to take a look at for practice and that we'll be talking about in class tomorrow. You might want to have your text out as well. Uh, don't forget to, to stop and rewind if you need to or pause so you can look at something in your notes or your textbook. You want to be able to describe the concept of correlation and explain how it's used in psychology research at the end of this video and be able to explain the similarities and differences between positive and negative correlations and what those terms mean. You also want to be able to describe how we can visually represent correlational research with scatter plots, and that'll probably be in a second shorter video. And be able to explain what is meant by this important statement that correlation does not equal causation when it comes to psychological research. So let's get started. Look at correlational studies, and you want to remember this phrase throughout the video that correlation does not equal causation when we compare variables, that variables do not necessarily cause the other variable to change in some way. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So I like this little cartoon. Um, correlation does not imply causation, although in this case it probably does, but most of the information that we'll talk about, remember, you cannot conclude causation. Correlation studies simply look for relationships between variables. Um, do they cause, do they, do they go up or down together? Does uh, one variable increase while another decreases, for example? Basically, is there a variable, a relationship between variables X and Y? Think about this for a minute. Um, do people who experience divorce in their family have more psychological problems? We're asking, is there a relationship between th those things? I wonder if this is true. Um, in this case, we're asking, is there a relationship between variable X and variable Y? Um, <laughs> so um, we're talking about relationships again here. And do you think you can identify which variable is X and which variable is Y in the example above? We'll talk about that. Um, pause if you need to, to think about that a little bit. But we'll talk about that in class. Um, we're going to also talk about um, what correlations do not tell us. Remember in the previous example, research supposedly measured people's marital status. Were they married or divorced? And then their, their psychological adjustment. Um, and we might find that there's a correlation between the two variables. The people who, no, who are no longer married who are divorced report experiencing more psychological problems. Now remember, this is a fictitious study. This may be true. Um, it's just an example that uh, I came up with for this video. So think to yourself, what conclusions can you make if this result was true? Because there's more than one. Pause it if you need to. We'll talk about this again in class tomorrow. What do correlations tell us? Um, well, it, it might be tempting to conclude in the previous example that divorce causes depression and anxiety. It makes sense, right? But... Um, that's not necessarily true. Does a broken marriage cause people to be more depressed? Because it might be equally likely that if people are depressed or have other psychological problems, they are more likely to have marriages that end in divorce. It's also just as likely that there's some other hidden variable that we don't know about that's linking those two things together and causing them to have an effect on each other. Um, we'll talk about that third hidden variable a little bit later. So why can't we conclude causation in correlational studies? Correlational studies are often done ex post facto. You might want to write that term down, ex post facto. It's not in the video. But it's done after events have already happened. So we really don't have, as a researcher, we really don't have any control over the environment that the variables occur in. So we can't rule out alternatives. Other things that are happening that we don't know about. So we can't conclude that variable X, like divorce, causes a change in mood or happiness um, or causes psychological problems. It could be true, and correlational studies might give us reason to do other research, but it doesn't necessarily, um, we can't conclude that without further research. So how do we measure the strength of correlational relationships and what does it look like? Um, 
we're looking at a number called a correlation coefficient, and this is a statistic that shows the strength of the relationship and what type of relationship the, the two variables have together. So let's talk about first um, a few things about the number. Um, the correlation coefficient has to fall between two numbers. Those two numbers are negative one and positive one. Every, every correlation will fall either at those two numbers or in between. So you can't have any number outside of those two. So if you see something like positive 2.1, that's not a legitimate correlation. Um, the number indicates the strength of the relationship. And this is very important. You'll be tested on this on the AP test and on my test for sure. The sign in front of the number indicates the direction of the relationship. Is it a positive or negative sign? And that's the only thing you can have. You can have a positive correlation, you can have a negative correlation, and you could have zero correlation. What does the number mean? Well, the closer the correlation number is to the extremes, either one or negative one, the stronger the relationship. You could also say the closer the number is to zero, the weaker the relationship. So a, point, a negative 0.85 correlation is actually a stronger relationship than a positive 0.51 correlation. Notice that the sign in front of the number doesn't indicate strength. The number itself indicates strength. Closer to 1 or negative 1, the stronger the relationship is. So here's a couple of practice questions. Um, would you expect the correlation between adult height and adult weight to be strong or weak? Is there a relationship between height and weight? Um, we might guess this is a 0.85 strong relationship. We'll talk about the positive. What would you expect um, the correlation to be between height of college students and their ACT scores? Do you think that's strong or weak? We might find a weak one there, which doesn't really tell us a lot. So how about um, practice? Which of the following represents the weakest correlation? You want to pause this? Take a look at it before I give you the answer. Um, if you answered A, you're correct. It's the farthest away from 1 or negative 1, um, or it's closest to 0. Now we know C can't even be in the, the running because it's not even a true correlation. So if you answered A, what be for, for you? Um, you answered correctly. Um, which of the following is not a correlation? Be able to explain why, and the correct answer there, of course, is D, because it's outside the range. We'll talk about that again tomorrow. So what does the sign mean? Well, the sign of the correlation tells us um, whether the variables are directly related, they move in the same direction, if one goes up, the other goes up, or inversely, if one goes up, the other one goes down. Um, so what we're asking is how do the signs affect um, our conclusions about the relationship? So think about this question. The more time a student spends studying, the better their grades will be. Or do you agree with this at least? It's not posed as a question, but can we conclude it? Will the more time a student studies actually lead to better grades? Um, we would have to test that. We can do that pretty easily, actually. Um, notice how both study time and grade vary in the same direction. So what we we're saying here is if we increase our study time, we can expect grades to go up. Um, that's a positive correlation. Um, study time and grades would be positively correlated. So we'd see a plus sign in front of that. And positive just means there's a direct relationship. The variables are changing in the same direction. Not likely at the same rate, though. One could go up a lot, like study time could go up a lot, and grades could only go up a little bit. Um, we can also conclude um, from this positive correlation that if it goes down, the other variable will probably go down too. So positive just means same direction movement. Think for a moment what we can conclude then from study time and grades. If someone increases their studying time, we see their grades go up, right? Study time might go up five hours a week and their grades might go up a half a grade point. But also, if someone's grades increased and we noticed, geez, your grades went up, we can probably assume that they've been studying more as well, and vice versa. Be careful. Remember, there's other factors that could link those two things together besides study time. Can you think of 
two or three factors on your own. We'll ask in class tomorrow, so you do want to stop and think. Um, and remember, we can't conclude that the increased decreased study time caused the grades to change. This correlation does not equal causation. There's also likely other variables that link those things together. Subject, um, the teacher, other students in class, the time of year, are you in a sport or not, your class schedule, your age, etc. A lot of things. Now the direction. Um, what if the two variables vary in opposite directions? How about this study? As family size increases, IQ scores decrease for the succeeding children. And as family sizes are smaller, so if there's only one or two kids, we can guess the IQ scores would be higher for those kids than if there was eight or nine kids in a family. So as one goes up, family size, IQ might decrease slightly. Um, what are, how are the two variables related in this example? We would call that a negative correlation, probably a weak one. Um, you'll have to be able to predict strength of the likely correlation in AP, on the AP test and on my test. Um, they're not probably strongly related, though. So if family sizes are smaller, we can guess the IQ scores of the children are probably slightly higher. That would be a negative correlation. So um, you want to complete this for class tomorrow. So a researcher finds that students who attend fewer classes get poorer grades. Um, why is this a positive or negative correlation? And can you think of two other variables that might explain um, why we find this relationship? And why can't we conclude causation? So we're going to move on to scatter plots next. So you should take a look at the end of your notes. There's some practice questions in there that we'll go over in class and be able, we'll actually talk about designing a correlational study in class. So um, good luck. And don't forget to be kind and rewind.